Let's pray before we begin. Lord, please let us understand your word and put it in our hearts. May it shape our lives to be more like your son. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Real quick, if you like this content, please like, subscribe, and share this with your friends. Thank you. Chapter 13 When Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. But when he offended in Baal, he died. And now they sin more and more, and have made them molten images of their silver, and idols according to their own understanding, all of it the work of the craftsmen. They say of them, Let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. Therefore they shall be as the morning cloud, and as the early dew that passeth away, as the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of the floor, and as the smoke out of the chimney. Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me, for there is no Saviour beside me. I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. According to their pasture so were they filled. They were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore have they forgotten me. Therefore I will be unto them as a lion, as a leopard by the way will I observe them. I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of her whelps, and will rend the call of their heart, and there will I devour them like a lion." The wild beast shall tear them. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. I will be thy king. Where is any other that may save thee in all thy cities, and thy judges of whom thou saidst, Give me a king and princes? I gave thee a king in mine anger, and took him away in my wrath. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up, his sin is hid. The sorrows of a travailing woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of children. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. Though he be fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come, the wind of the Lord shall come up from the wilderness, and his spring shall become dry, and his fountain shall be dried up. He shall spoil the treasure of all pleasant vessels. Samaria shall become desolate, for she hath rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword, their infants shall be dashed in pieces, and their women with child shall be ripped up. Matthew Henry Commentary on Hosea chapter 13, verses 1 to 8. While Ephraim kept up a holy fear of God and worshipped him in that fear, so long he was very considerable. When Ephraim forsook God and followed idolatry, he sunk. Let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves in token of their adoration of them, affection for them, and obedience to them. But the Lord will not give his glory to another, and therefore all that worship images shall be confounded. No solid, lasting comfort is to be expected anywhere but in God. God not only took care of the Israelites in the wilderness, he put them in possession of Canaan, a good land. But worldly prosperity, when it feeds men's pride, makes them forgetful of God. Therefore the Lord would meet them in just vengeance as the most terrible beast that inhabited their forests. Abused goodness calls for greater severity. Verses 9 to 16. Israel had destroyed himself by his rebellion, but he could not save himself. His help was from the Lord only. This may well be applied to the case of spiritual redemption, from that lost state into which all have fallen by willful sins. God often gives in displeasure what we sinfully desire. It is the happiness of the saints that, whether God gives or takes away, all is in love. But it is the misery of the wicked that, whether God gives or takes away, it is all in wrath, nothing is comfortable. Except sinners repent and believe the gospel, anguish will soon come upon them. The prophecy of the ruin of Israel as a nation also showed there would be a merciful and powerful interposition of God to save a remnant of them. Yet this was but a shadow of the ransom of the true Israel by the death, burial and resurrection of Christ. He will destroy death and the grave. The Lord would not repent of his purpose and promise. Yet, in the meantime, 
Israel would be desolated for her sins. Without fruitfulness in good works, springing from the Holy Spirit, all other fruitfulness will be found as empty as the uncertain riches of the world. The wrath of God will wither its branches, its sprigs shall be dried up, it shall come to nothing. Woes, more terrible than any from the most cruel warfare, shall fall on those who rebel against God. From such miseries, and from sin the cause of them, may the Lord deliver us. Please consider, how does this chapter apply to you? Thank you for listening. If you want to know more about Jesus and what the gospel means to you, then hit the video shown on the left of the screen, and please don't forget to subscribe. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless your day.